Yo yo, welcome to lesson 48. Today we're going to learn how to add pagination to our Pokédex app. If you don't remember what pagination is, feel free to rewatch lesson 42. And here's a quick demo of what we will be building. So let's get started. Cool. So first we need to add another state variable to keep track of the offset. So let's do const open the square brackets and put offset and add a comma and do set offset and then do equals use state open the parentheses and initially we want the offset to be zero so let's put zero here and click enter and also we need another variable to keep track of the limit so let's do const limit equals 20. so for the limit we don't need use state because this value will probably not change at all next we want to update the fetch url to include the offset and limit so first let's change the quotation marks to tildes so replace this one and this one and now let's add a question mark here and let's do offset equals dollar squiggle bracket and inside here let's put offset and then add an ampersand so that we can add another variable so let's do limit equals dollar sign squiggle brackets and put limit cool so now we have more control for what pokemons will be fetching next in the html let's add a button so let's do button and let's call it more so when the user clicks more we want to call set offset to update the offset value by 20. So let's add a on click here. So on click equals open the squiggle brackets. And here we have to pass a closure. So open the parentheses and do the arrow key and open the squiggle brackets. Then inside the body, just do set offset, open the parentheses. And here we can do offset plus limit. So this way we add 20 each time the user clicks more. And last but not least, we want to trigger this effect each time the offset changes. So on line 62, here we had an empty list, so that means it only gets triggered once when the app loads. Now, if we want it to get triggered when the offset changes, all we have to do is put the offset inside here. So basically inside this list, you can put state variables inside here, and when the state variable updates, it will trigger the effect. Cool, so now let's hit save, and now let's go to our app, and now let's scroll to the bottom, and here you'll see the more button. Let's click that, and boom, look, we got the next 20 Pokemons, but instead of adding more cards, it just replaced the previous 20 cards. So that's not looking right. Let's go back to the code. All right, so the problem is that on line 60, we're replacing the Pokemon list with the new results. Instead, we want to add the new results onto the old results. So we can achieve this with JavaScript's spread operator. So first open the square brackets and now add three dots and now copy Pokemon lists and paste it after that. And now add a comma and add three more dots and now close the list. So by adding the three dots in front of the Pokemon list, we're saying that we want to copy all the items inside this list and add it to this new list that we're creating. And we're also copying the new results and adding it to this new list. So basically we get a combined list of the Pokemon list and the new results. So now hit save and now let's go back to the page and now let's scroll down, hit more and boom, that's how easy it is to add pagination. But we can also make this app a lot better by adding a loader. So let's go to Bootstrap and let's search for loader. And here we see a spinner, so let's click that. So this spinner looks perfect, so let's copy that and go back to our code. And let's drop it above the button. And let's hit save and let's go back to our page. And at the bottom, you can see the loader. It looks a bit weird, so let's fix that. So let's go back to our code. So we can fix this by adding a div to the button, so let's do that. And now scroll back to the bottom. And this looks a lot better. Cool. So now let's go back to our code. So basically, we want to show this loader only when we're loading. So let's add another state. So let's do const square brackets is loading and then set is loading and then we can do equals use state and let's set it to false at the beginning and now let's end it with a semicolon so we only want to show the loader when we're fetching data so now we can add it here so we can do set is loading and set it to true here and copy this line and let's update this then statement to set the loader back to false so now we can do false and now scroll down uh, the formatting looks messed up so right click and click format document and that looks a lot better so now for this loader, we can just add conditional rendering. So now add a squiggle bracket here and close this squiggle bracket here. And now just do is loading equals equals true. So that means when it's loading, we want to show the loader. And now after this div, add a colon and put no. So that means when loading is false, we're going to show nothing. So now let's hit save and now let's go back to our page and let's refresh. Let's scroll to the bottom and let's click more. Uh, we didn't really notice anything because it was so quick. So let's scroll down and try again. Click more. It's still too fast. My internet is just so fast, so you don't really see the loader. But let's try again. Oh, you saw it for like a quick second. But you get the point. If you're on a slower network, you're going to see a loader. And that will make your app 10 times better because now the user knows that data will be loading. 
Anyways, that's it for this lesson. Hopefully you learned something new. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson.